Hey, what's up everybody? 8-Bit Flashback here. I just got myself an awesome new product to review. This is a dual arcade console that comes with 1600 built-in games. And I've been testing this out for a few weeks now, and my family and I have had a lot of fun playing with this. It features a huge variety of 80s and 90s arcade games in 720p HDMI resolution. And with the dual arcade joysticks, you can enjoy playing two-player at the same time, just like in the arcades. And this is just a simple plug and play setup. You plug in the power, then connect the HDMI cable to your TV, and you're ready to go. On this arcade console, it features a joystick for both player one and player two, plus six action buttons and a start and select button. All the buttons feel nice and solid, and the joystick feels pretty rigid as well. Now I don't know the actual longevity of this joystick or the buttons, but I've been playing with this for a couple weeks and I've had no issues whatsoever with any of the buttons or the joystick. Here's an up close look at the back of the arcade console. There's the power input, the HDMI output, the VGA output, so you can hook this to a computer if you want to, an audio output, volume control for the internal speaker, so you can play sound either from the arcade console or from your TV. It also features a couple of USB ports that are designed for either adding your own games or using the arcade stick as a controller for your PC or PS3. But as of yet, I have not been able to make these USB features work. But if I do manage to get these working, I will leave a comment down below describing how the process works. I decided to go ahead and open this up so I could see what's going on inside. And from what I can see, this appears to be some sort of Pandora's box type board. And it does use the Pandora's box software that is installed on the internal micro SD card. Now I know that I just mentioned that I did not have any issues with the buttons or joysticks, but I guess I did have just one small issue. And that was the connector that plugs into the joysticks on both sides, there's a little clip. And for some reason that wasn't clipped all the way in place and all I had to do was go ahead and press that clip all the way on and everything was good to go. So if you have any issues with any of the buttons or the joysticks, just make sure to check all those connections first because it's a real simple fix. Included with my arcade console was a VGA cable, an HDMI cable, a screwdriver that's double-sided so you can open up the console, and two extra buttons. So if you have any issues with your buttons later on, they can easily be replaced. Now let's go ahead and test out a few games. So there's 10 games per page, and there are 166 pages. So that equals a lot of games. And for the most part, I have not seen very many duplicate games, but I have seen slightly different variants for certain games like Street Fighter. And we're gonna go ahead and start off with some Mortal Kombat 4. The emulation for most of the games I've tested so far seems to be pretty good. They seem to be playing at full speed, and the controls are working great. But with some games, the button mapping might be a little weird. To solve this though, you are able to change the button mapping inside the settings menu. And I will show you how to access that menu later on. The sound quality is pretty good as well when hooked to my TV. But the internal speaker I would say is just okay sounding, and I usually just keep it turned all the way down. The visuals look nice and sharp for the most part in 720p HD resolution, but I did notice with certain games, the visuals look not so sharp. And I think this is because these certain games have pre-configured settings to make them run smoother on this console. To navigate through the menus, it's really easy. You just push up or down on the joystick or to the right to change the page. And to select a game, you just push the bottom left button. And if you want to pause or exit the game, you push the top left button on the second player side. Then to select your choice, you're going to go back to the player one side and use your joystick to go up or down, and then push the bottom left button to select your choice. And to access the settings menu, you're going to push this button right here that's located on the back of the console, and that will take you to this menu right here, where there are a bunch of different settings you can mess with, including the button mapping. Okay, let's play some more games now. So I've never owned an arcade console like this before, and I was a little skeptical at first on how it would perform. And I was pleasantly surprised by how much fun I'm having with this, especially playing with two players. And when I use this with my big screen TV along with my surround sound, it really does make me feel like I'm at the arcades. Now I can play all my favorite games I grew up playing in the arcades right in my living room with unlimited credits. Because there are so many games, I obviously can't test everything. And there are some games I'll probably never play. But there are more than enough games to keep me happy and entertained for a long time. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a full game list that I can find. 
but here in a few minutes I will manually scroll through the entire game list just to show you what's available on this console. Now let's try out some Ninja Turtles, and I used to play this game all the time when I was a kid at my local airport. Every time relatives would come in, I'd always want to go to the airport so I could play this game. But I remember going there one day and the game was gone and I was so bummed. Here's some Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and I don't think I've actually ever played the arcade version of this. I played it on Sega Genesis a bunch, but never the arcade, and it seems to play pretty well. Here's some Bonanza Bros, and this is my kid's favorite game, but for my nephew, it's a different story. He didn't really care for this game. But he was a fan of Ghosts and Goblins. He really dug that game. And Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter. Who can't like this game? This game is awesome and one of my favorite games for sure. And of course, we can't forget about Street Fighter, one of the best arcade games ever. But I have to admit, I'm a fan of Mortal Kombat just a little bit more. Okay, it is time for me to get out of here, and if you like this video, if you could, hit that like button. And I'm going to leave you with the game list. I'm going to manually scroll through every game, and there is a bunch of them, so it's going to take a little bit here. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.